Hello, welcome. In this short video, let us look at the detection of a DC level against additive white Gaussian noise using the Neyman Pearson test. That is, given the following models under H0, that is under null hypothesis, observation X of n is equal to the noise component W of n, where n is equal to 0 up to n minus 1, that is, we have n observations. Under the alternate hypothesis, the model is x of n is equal to a DC level A plus the noise component W of n. And given the information that the noise component W of n follows a normal distribution with mean equal to 0 and variance equal to sigma square. So, for this problem, the likelihood ratio test can be written as follows. That is the ratio of probability distribution of the observation vector x under the alternate hypothesis over probable distribution of x under H0 should be greater than a threshold gamma. The probable distribution of the observation vector x under the null hypothesis is clearly equal to the product n equal to 0 to n minus 1 of the probability distribution of x of n under H0, which is equal to the product n equal to 0 to n minus 1, 1 by a normal distribution with mean equal to 0 and variance equal to sigma square. Under the alternate hypothesis, probability of distrib uh, the probability distribution of x under H1 is equal to the product n equal to 0 to n minus 1 probability of x of n under H1, which is again a normal distribution with mean A and variance equal to sigma square. Now, the likelihood ratio test is equal to the ratio of this probability distribution n equal to 0 to n minus 1, 1 by square root of 2 pi sigma square exponential of minus x of n minus a whole square over 2 sigma square. And the denominator is n equal to 0 to n minus 1, that is product of the probability distributions from n equal to 0 to n minus 1 over 1 by square root of 2 pi sigma square exponential of minus x square of n over 2 sigma square, should be greater than a threshold gamma. Clearly the, con the clearly, the normalizing constants in the numerator and the denominator cancel each other. So, we are left with exponential of minus summation n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n minus a whole square over 2 sigma square minus summation n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x square or x square of n over 2 sigma square and this should be greater than gamma. Upon simplification, this becomes exponential of minus n a square, that is a square multiplied, that is the term a square and it is repeated n times. So, we have n a square and the second term is x square of n which cancels with this x square of n and the, and the last one is minus, the other term is minus 2 a summation n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n. And the denominator is of course 2 sigma square. And this is greater than gamma. Now, taking logarithm on both sides, we have 2 times a by 2 sigma square summation n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n minus n a square divided by 2 sigma square is greater than logarithm of gamma. Upon further simplification, this becomes summation n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n is greater than logarithm of gamma plus n a square divided by 2 sigma square multiplied by sigma square over a. Now, by dividing with n on both sides, we have 1 by n summation n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n is greater than 1 by n logarithm of gamma plus a square over 2 sigma square 
multiplied by sigma square over a which is equal to sigma square by a n logarithm of gamma plus sigma squares cancel and we have a by 2. Therefore, the likelihood ratio test simplifies to the following that is the test statistic t of x should be greater than a new threshold gamma dash where the statistic t of x is equal to the sample mean which is 1 by n summation n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n and the threshold gamma dash is equal to a by 2 plus sigma square over n times a logarithm of threshold gamma. So, the new threshold is basically a transformation of the original threshold gamma. We can clearly see that from the definition of the statistic t of x that is the sample mean will also follow the normal distribution that is t of x will also have a normal distribution under both the hypotheses. But for under the null hypothesis it is clearly a normal distribution with the mean equal to 0 and variance equal to sigma square over n. This is because the sample mean has the mean equal to 0 since the mean of x of n is 0 under the null hypothesis and the variance is sigma square by n because the variance of sample mean is sigma square by n. Under the alternate hypothesis, this is under null hypothesis. Under the alternate hypothesis, test statistic follows a normal distribution with mean equal to a and variance equal to sigma square over n. This is true because this is true because under the alternate hypothesis the mean of x of n is a therefore the mean of its sample mean that is t of x is also a and the variance is same which is sigma square by n which is the variance of a sample mean. So, thus we have the probability distributions of the test statistic under both the hypotheses. Now, we can calculate the threshold gamma dash as follows by using the definition of probability of false alarm which is equal to probability that the statistic t of x is greater than gamma dash under the null hypothesis. And since t of x follows a normal distribution with mean equal to 0 and variance equal to sigma square over n, we can standardize the variable as z equal to t of x over sigma square by n, square root of sigma square over n. So, by using this transformation on both sides that is gamma dash minus 0 by square root of sigma square by n on the right side we have probability of false alarm is equal to probability that z that is a standard normal variable is greater than gamma dash over square root of sigma square by n. And this is clearly equal to the q function at gamma dash over square root of sigma square by n. Clearly from this definition we can write that the value of gamma dash can be calculated as square root of sigma square over n multiplied by q inverse of probability of false alarm. Now, probability of detection that is PD is equal to probability that the statistic T of x is greater than gamma dash under the alternate hypothesis H1. And in this case, we can standardize the variable as z equal to T of x minus the mean A over the variance square root of variance sigma square by n. So, by using this transformation, we have probability of detection is equal to probability that the standard variable z is greater than gamma dash greater than gamma dash minus a over square root of sigma square by n which is equal to the q function at gamma dash minus a over square root of sigma square by n. Now, by using the result from probability of false alarm that is value of gamma dash in this function the probability of detection we have that is probability of detection is equal to the q function at square root of sigma square by n multiplied by q inverse of probability of false alarm minus a divided by square root of sigma square by n which implies that probability of detection is equal to the q function at since these two values cancel each other for the first term we have q inverse of probability of false alarm minus 
square root of n by sigma square multiplied by a. So, this value gives the probability of detection. Thanks for watching.